Hi guys, today we're going to talk about... Uh, divorce. Uh, divorce. With divorce. Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so, yeah. that was like the most awkward so introduction. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Alright, so we've done a lot of episodes about um, like v- v- divorce and different people's experiences, um, but today we have the opportunity of like Sam and Taylor here have both... Um, I was gonna say it again. <laughs> they have not been divorced. Their your your parents were divorced, uh-huh. and parents were divorced. Their parents are not the same parents. No, they're not. <laughs> I can't say your parents have been divorced because that would assume that they have the same parents. I just need that to be clear. So it's clear. You're good. We just have a really cool okay. opportunity opportunity for you guys to share some experiences <laughs> on like on how to cope. You know, mm-hmm. you guys are both very successful people who are married. You know, living the gospel. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Flattered. I just That's no. I'm just flattering. saying. Like, I, I I grew up seeing like in my, there's a lot of kids in my high school that whose parents were divorced, and I saw how it just just destroyed them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and like it really affected their. And I, I saw the difference the before and after when they were just happy, friendly, super great, and then after the divorce, everything changed. And I'm like, I didn't know what was going on because yeah. I was like, so like, I it's really a hard thing. Yeah, and honestly, I think it gets harder the older the child is. Like it's get hard, gets harder for the child, yeah, um, because they get so comfortable and they get they feel safe in that environment, and then suddenly it breaks and it's shattered. Me personally, my parents divorced when I was seven, and so at age seven, I didn't really understand a lot of what was going on, and so I think yeah. a lot of like the any traumatic the the emotions, the feelings, everything that I experienced was all kind of. I think it, it happened subconsciously a lot of it, right? Um, whereas I think the older you are. It happens on the surface. Right, like right away. Surface, yeah. But. And I mean, I my parents were divorced the first time when I was 10, and then they remarried each other like a year later. And then after a year or so, they divorced each other again. And then later, when I was in junior high, high school, they started dating again. And so, Whoa! speaking oh, from man. those different <laughs> phases, when, like you said, when I was a kid, it's like, okay. I mean, my parents live in separate houses. That's kind of cool. I get to pack things. My dad had awesome snacks at his place. Right. So it just, it wasn't as big a deal. It's definitely still really hard. Mm -hmm. Um, But then growing up, especially like at that age of junior high, high school, or even past that when you're developing your own romantic relationships, it's scary and it's definitely affects you more. Did you guys, I mean, do you, do you feel, was that a hard thing to overcome? With, when searching your own romantic relationships, was it like, were you afraid or were you like, I'm just, won't, I'll do it differently? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. Scary. Like, yeah, I mean, I was engaged twice. Like, I got engaged when I was, like, back in 2014 when I was wow. just off my mission. Yeah. And then I ended up calling it off because, like, the way that I was feeling, my parents came to me and they're like, this is how we felt when we got married. And my parents ended up getting divorced. And I'm like, this oh, is wow. dumb. We're not, like, yeah, that's not scary. Doing this. Yeah. So, and then I didn't, um, like, I didn't introduce, I didn't even introduce any of the girls that I was dating to my parents for, like, another, like, four years, um, even if I was dating somebody. Right. Because I just didn't, I was, honestly, I was, I was yeah. scared of that. So it took me a while to finally get right. married. I wanted to be sure, beyond all reasonable doubt. Right. But but, but that's good, also. Yeah. You know, it's not, because it's not it gave you, like, it's like when you learn from other people's mistakes, in, in a sense. Yeah. So I wasn't planning on getting married when I was as young as I was. I was 20. I thought I'd be older um, because of that. And so it definitely was scarier for me. And we kind of, we had a little chit chat earlier, Taylor and I. um, But something that I think affected us is we kind of looked at it going into things that divorce wasn't an option for us because we saw how terrible it was for our parents, our siblings, and like we just, we weren't going to get divorced. And that's not good to have that much. It, it's good it, and it's not it, good. It's good to a certain extent. Right. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's like a good, uh, it's a good cushion and a good fortification, but it can be taken, like a lot of things, to an extreme. Right. Um, exactly. Interesting. Like if you're in an abusive right. relationship, like there are a lot of women who have abusive husbands emotionally, psychologically, physically, mm-hmm. and, uh, but they want to make it work and they want to stay sealed and have eternal marriages and so they stick with them and sometimes that's not always the best option. Mm-hmm. Since you were both pretty young, did is did you have any coping mechanisms that you found worked really well, or things that didn't work well? 
that like you can warn people about, I guess? Um, something that I felt was really important is when I, so when they divorced the first time I was in elementary school and we had a school counselor. And so my parents just signed me and my other sister to go up and see this school counselor. And it was the best thing ever because she'd have these little cards that we'd, we'd color and it would have different faces of emotions. And we were supposed to color in the ones that we felt. And I was always coloring in the angry one. And then I felt so bad because I was so angry at my parents. But she was like, she was validating that and just helping me kind of talk through it and understand why I felt the way I did, but never making me feel bad for feeling the way I did. So I think therapy, counseling, or just if you have someone specific and that you trust to talk to about things is really important. Yeah, totally. That's way cool. I never got that kind of counseling when I was young. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in high school, like I went to a counselor like one time. I don't even remember like the, the exact reasons for it, but I didn't. It just wasn't for me, I guess. But then, ever since getting married, I've just become so used to how I am and how life is and everything. Um, once I got married my wife, Amy, she starts asking all these questions, like things that I had never, ever even thought about. And Mm -hmm. she's like, this isn't normal. And this isn't like, you need to sort out. And so she's been, um, I guess, in a certain sort of way, she's kind of been helping me through therapy. She's been kind of my therapist a little bit, uh, helping me sort through um, like different feelings that I didn't even know that I had, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I guess going forward, because th- this is really interesting. Like, this is really cool for me because um, that, that's just never really been a part of my life, you know. And it's conversations I've rarely had. Um, but um, for for your relationships now, um, are there things that like you? I don't know. Like, or do you? Does that think? Do you think about it? Is it scary? Or are you like? Do you do you know how to better live your relationship because of what your parents went through? I think so. Yeah. Um, something that's been important for me is just talking to my husband and explaining, you know, there's some things I do and I understand that they're not normal or the way I think about things. And so I've just explained, you know, this is where I'm coming from and this is why I do the things I do. And he's pretty understanding. I think he's wonderful. I love him. (laughs) (laughs) That's cool. But I think that's important. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and for me, I feel like the first thing that I did to make that work is I didn't get married at the same age my parents got married. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, my parents got married, like, my dad was three months off his mission. They were high school sweethearts. Ooh. Um, and, like, the marriage date was, like, three months after he got home. Um, and so he was really young. She was really young. They were really poor. They didn't have a lot of direction, you know, education-wise or career-wise. Um, and just things were not good. And so... My thought has always been like, well, if I if I wait a little bit longer, get through school, figure out what I want to do, figure yeah. out my goals and everything, you know, decide who I am and yeah. what I'm doing, then that can do tremendous things for a marriage. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Not that oh. it's the a requirement because I know. No, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's what helped me. And something kind of when you mentioned um, the goals, figuring out what you wanted to do and things is. For me, my parents, when they got married, they started having kids right away. And kids are awesome, but they're also, they take a lot of time. And so you can't use that time to build your relationship as much as you want to or just set this good foundation. So for me, watching that, it was important that not necessarily what age I got married, but what age or how long I had been married before I started having kids, just so that we focused on our relationship we could both grow and solidifying that before yeah. adding another. Well, I think what happens is is that you get when you get married, it's exciting, it's new, mm-hmm. you know. And then when you get to that, uh, that this is the norm now. We're married. This is kind of an average. Then the, the mindset is okay. What's the next thing to make it new? Right. Okay, let's have a kid. That's the, like you yeah. know. That, that's, I feel like that that happens. It's just kind of a natural response. But I think it does take some responsibility to yeah. like. To think about it, you know, right. like, <laughs> and it's okay if and when it does happen. You know? Yeah, um, exactly. Like if you both are communicating and you both feel like this is what the Lord wants for both of you and right. you're on the same page, then by all means do it. Yeah. But don't feel pressured to do it just because things are feeling normal again or it's plateauing. Right. Yeah. You don't need to always be pushing that. Sometimes pushing it is just developing your guys' relationship a little bit more. Yeah. And then I guess, because I was wondering about your guys' relationship with your parents, 
because there's this talk, or not this, this stat here that says among those age 54 to 64, the divorce rate has quadrupled over the past 30 years. So that means a lot of people who are like our age, their parents mm-hmm. are divorcing right now. Yeah. And so it's a little bit different than your experience, I guess. But as you've gotten older, how has your relationship with your parents been? You know, because as I mean, first, like, has that anger carried forward, you know, or have you like... I think I felt a lot more anger and resentment when I was younger. And especially, you know, it was a roller coaster and I was just so frustrated. But now things are settled and I I gained a better understanding of my own relationships and um, just building my relationship with my parents. And so I, I think I've matured more to a place that I can understand things better and I'm feel like our relationships are better for that. Yeah, totally. Interesting. It, it, makes, it makes me think of like in, in like in middle school. I was in middle school. My older sister was in high school and she hated me. I don't like you. Mm-hmm. You know, and then she and then she <laughs> went to college and came back and I was like in high school and she's like, wow, you're actually really cool. And I was like, I was, and she's like, when did you get to be so cool? And I was like, I was always cool. And it's just like, <laughs> you just hated me. <laughs> so I feel like there's a certain amount of like when, when you're growing up, there's like, it's just hard to really have a mature relationship because you're not yeah. mature, you know? So, like, that makes sense that, like, yeah. when you're a kid, like, zero to, what, ten, mm-hmm. it's easier mm-hmm. because you're a kid and yeah. you get to do sleepovers I mean, and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because, like, it still affects you, right? but it doesn't affect you, you as much on the surface. Yeah, it's it's very much so, like, underneath. Yeah. And then it manifests itself when you're a teenager, I feel mm-hmm. like. Because as a child, you're just like, oh, this is the way the world is. And you don't object. You just kind right. of live life that way. Whereas if you're a teenager, you're like, this is not how it's supposed right. to be. And then once you reach like 20, 25, you start to have an understanding of what your world is mm-hmm. as an individual. And then it's easier to like accept or or yeah. reject. I don't know. And I think either way, like the initial when it happens, and I'm not speaking for everyone, I only have my own experience, but initially when it happens, it's really easy to just try and place blame and figure out what went wrong and why it happened, mm-hmm. and everyone's kind of upset, but yeah, as an adult, we're more mature and capable of handling those feelings. Right. Yeah. Processing that it wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> necessarily. Right. As a, as a child, that probably happens a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, it didn't happen to me, but I know. No, yeah, I can't kids. imagine being in that position where you're like... This is something I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it, when it has very little to do, you know, yeah. with kids yeah. and more to do with a couple. I feel like my relationship with my parents is like my, my whole family relationship, the whole dynamic is really weird. Because when you are, when you live with divorced parents, it's almost like it doesn't create two families. It creates three because you've got the two sets of parents at the houses and then you've got the kids who live between mm-hmm. the two. Mm-hmm. And you don't really have like a home necessarily because you're almost always living out of your own backpack or your suitcase because you're visiting, right? And I think you kind of get trained to think about and communicate with your parents when it's their time. Like, oh, we're going to dad's house. It's time to talk to dad. You know, it's time to be with dad. Or we're at mom's house. It's time to talk and be with mom. And so I think on some level that affected my family where we don't really have a lot of, we don't have problems with each other. Like I've had siblings who have had a little bit more problems than me personally, but uh, with my parents specifically. But for the most part, it's like we just don't really communicate that often. Like when we do, it's always good and always nice, but we don't reach out. Mm-hmm. Um, we wait for the other one to reach out to us. So as a result, we go like a month without speaking. But right. there's no hard feelings ever. But right. I do think that being divorced and having that two-house, two-home family dynamic contributes a lot to that because you just sort of categorize like right. dad time, mom time. Well, it's like, because like, like if you, you have a certain amount of capacity to give to people every day, mm-hmm. you know, emotionally. And like, and so let's say if, and if that is split up between so many different people, right. you're only gonna be able to give so much. Yeah. You know, and then as makes, much as you may try to give it all to both of them. Right. But it, it but it makes sense at the end of the day, you can't give a hundred percent to every single person in your life. It's going to be split up and you have to prioritize. Mm-hmm. And the people Definitely. who are there every day are the people who are going to get the most. That's um, true. It's like, that makes sense. And do you, is there like a wide age gap between you and your siblings? Like, um, span across no, them? I mean, well, my, I have an older sister, two years older, and then I've got a younger brother by four years. And I think um, my older sister was the one who was the most externally because she got really yeah. angry uh-huh. um, for a while. And, uh, 
And I was kind of in the middle. I was just like dealing with it, like, oh, this is normal. And then my brother, who was only like two and a half, three years old at the time, oh, wow. um, I think he's the one with the most subconscious Like long-term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, well, just growing up in a world that's so different, like, like that's not what you see in the movies, you know, or right. like what you, what the church even talks about being the ideal home. Yeah. And, which kind of suck, you know, like growing yeah. up and being like, have the church be like, oh, this is an ideal family, an ideal home, and yeah. it's not, and the no fault of your own, you're like, your house, and your, this your is family's n- different. You're not there. And so mm-hmm. it's like, like the songs like Families Can Be Together Forever, like I had a problem with that song yeah. as a child, you know, because I just didn't think it was accurate. Right. Or would you want it to be accurate? You know, like. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I did as a child. Yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. But I think the more I grew up, the more I realized that families can be together forever is more about like your family. Like, right. When you, mm-hmm. when you come to have your own family, just because your parents didn't stay together forever doesn't right. mean you can't stay with someone else together. Yeah. Forever. And, uh, and I think that that was a really important thing for me to learn. That's awesome. So um, we're sure you guys like, have had experiences. And if you want to share or have any questions, please comment. As always, or like, reach out to us on social media. I, I think Instagram, we're pretty responsive. But and Twitter and stuff. And then um, like, comment, subscribe. I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> Fill your taxes. Vote in your respective countries and provinces. Stay in school. Stay don't, Don't do, do drugs. drugs. Yep. That's the one. I think the church is doing Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the prophets are watching. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>